This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey guys, salut, this is Alex. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are being safe. I hope you guys are staying at home. Well, I definitely am. I'm stuck at home. I can't get out without a written permission. Unfortunately, the studio isn't near my house. And basically, I'm still craving foods I can't get my hands on. The latest craving being ramen. I'm not talking about instant ramen, no, I'm talking about a GT made big savory bowl of ramen noodles swimming in a flavorful broth. That's what I'm craving for. There is the broth, noodles, tare sauce, flavor oil, and then there are the toppings. I don't have the tools, I don't have the ingredients. Is this about crying and just giving up on life all at once? No, it's not. It's about making the best out of what we've got. I don't care what I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna make ramen. <laughs> Right, so uh, let's start with the uh, element in ramen that takes the longest to cook, the broth. So let's get this out of the way immediately. I don't have any main protein. I don't have beef, I don't have a whole chicken, I don't have like a shoulder of pork. One thing I do have is this. Leftovers for, from everything that I cooked uh, using vegetables in the past two weeks. Let me just get everything out and then I'll guide you through um, the concept I got in mind, okay? Leeks, fennels, parsley, stalks, stems of tomato and the thing that nobody wants to eat, zucchini, peelings of carrots, skins and pieces of onions, a few stems of garlic. If you think this is all trash, then why the hell does this <sighs> smell amazing? I'm hungry smelling this right now. Probably getting mad as the pièce de résistance trimmings from a parmaham. This is gonna bring tons of flavor plus a bit of gelatin parmesan cheese rind packed with flavors and this hopefully is gonna make for a very rich balanced flavorful ramen broth. Now, if you tell me this doesn't look appetizing, I'm not gonna blame you, but you still have to trust that this is gonna turn into an amazing broth. That's for the uh, broth down now. Let's work on the toppings instead. I'm gonna make a seasoned egg. So this is one, and I'm thinking about three different toppings. I've been heavily inspired by Ivan Ramen, ramen star in the US, brilliant guy, and I'm gonna roast half a tomato in the oven. And this is full of umami. Caramelized onions have sweet, dark, toasted, charred, caramelized flavor. And I think this could work replacing the, the slices of pork. One, two, and three. Let's do it. Now for the egg, I'm gonna cook it for five minutes in order to keep the, the yolk still runny, but the white, you know, firm enough. The reason why I'm not going for six minutes and 30 seconds, as I defined in a specific episode about ramen eggs in the past, these are stored at the moment at room temperature because I'm lacking real estate in the fridge. I reckon they need more, but we are on our way. Right, so I stopped the cooking process with a bit of cold water. Peel this and be as careful as possible. You never can afford to waste food, but especially in these times, no. The inside of this egg is very, very soft, and that's a good sign, a very good sign. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Kitchen towel, add a bit of water. The kitchen towel is keeping the egg fully submerged at all time without using too much soy. You don't waste this in, in, in periods of confinement. I love you, he loves me too. Mad. I'm starting to get some nice colors on these. Let's just taste this stock and see if it's going the right direction or not. Got the ham, the onions, I've got the leeks. We've also got a bit of bitterness, but it's missing the roundness. It is lacking a bit of sweetness at the moment. I'm gonna use the juices from a can of a sweet corn. If I don't try, I'm never gonna learn. I mean, who uses these juices anyway? Oh yes, some port wine this is sweet this is flavorful there you go ah well nicer the flavor profile and also the little kick right so the next element of ramen and the next behemoth in this recipe is making myself fresh ramen noodles you didn't think i was going to use instant ramen noodles you just need 100 gram of flour and 40 grams of water plus a bit of salt and a bit of any alkali like 
baking soda. Now in reality things are a bit more complicated. I don't have a dough mixer here, I don't have a, a pasta machine, so I'm gonna have to do it all by hand. It's gonna be problematic. This is gonna be one hell of a workout. I mean, sometimes I'm wondering if I'm if I'm a real cook or not. I just favor the studio so much. The studio has all the fancy stuff and this kitchen has nothing. A scale, for even sake, a scale. Is that too much to ask? Well, that's about 100 gram of flour. Water, 40 grams. Big pinch of salt. Another pinch of this sodium carbonate. What do you mean, Alex, you don't have anything at, at, at your kitchen? You've got sodium carbonate. Who has sodium carbonate? Basically, bake bicarb of soda for an hour in the oven. And then you've got this. Because of the low hydration, this dough is gonna be very hard to make it come together. So one of the things I do, usually, I wrap it, place it on the side and wait for like 30 minutes. The dough is gonna absorb all those little remainings of water a bit better and it's gonna make the whole thing softer and easier to work with. So I should be working on the tare sauce, but it still is a bit daunting to me. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave that on the side for now and, and, and instead focus on the flavoring oil. Now this is a very simple sesame and garlic oil. Pungent vibe from the garlic, but also that complex wild flavor from sesame. Done, let's get back to noodles. Fresh noodles. Already much softer this one. It's not super, super soft. It's better than it was before. <laughs> oh shit. been needing to shoot out of this though for like 30 minutes. It's not over yet. So I think I'm close to the thickness that I want. Absolutely stunning. Oh, there's nothing like making fresh noodles. Four out of five elements sorted, the only remaining one is the one I've been avoiding straight from the start. Tare sauce, heavily salty, heavily umami based. But sometimes it can get a bit complicated. And that's why I decided to give a friend of mine, a Skype call basically, Mike Satinover, also known as Ramen Lord on Reddit. The OG source of information when you want to make ramen yourself. So let's just give this guy a call. Alex, what's up? How are oh, you, man. man? This is crazy. This is amazing to see you, man. This is the closest we've ever been to making a collab together. I know, I want to, trust me. I've been using your material uh, on, on Reddit for a while, and I feel like these are the absolute most comprehensive tutorials when it comes to ramen that you can find online, at, at least in English. Thank you, man. In I English. really appreciate that. You're based in Chicago, right? Correct. So how's the situation right uh, now? Not good. Not, not good, yeah. I'm, I'm close too. to being mentally mad. You made meatballs for two months. I feel like you can handle a couple of weeks. I do try and stay optimistic, and I feel like mm. luckily my job allows me to work from home, which is great. And yeah. also my hobbies are all in the kitchen. People are sending me pictures every day. Sourdough, ramen, mm -hmm. pizzas. People are taking those projects that are super difficult and doing them now. So I'm working on ramen at the moment. I have limited food supplies, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean I can't make ramen. So I thought instead of following a recipe, I should follow the principle of ramen. This is maybe the biggest question that I get asked. How do I make this without having to go crazy finding ingredients that are really weird and bizarre? Mm -hmm. Like that's mm -hmm. a core question of modern ramen making and now we're, we have to hit it. Can you make ramen with just what you have? But that's the cooking that I love. That's the cooking that I do every night for my family. When I just go back and sh I forgot to do the groceries. Inspired by Ivan Ramen as well. I'm gonna have a roasted tomato as a topping. Tons of umami. It'll bleed a little bit into the soup. Nice. Caramelized onions replacing the shashu. Caramelized onions is actually smart. Onions, when they cook down heavily, like to the point of heavy caramelization, create a compound that is called MMP, 
An MMP is denoted no, as interesting because it creates interesting, uh, savory, meaty flavors on the palate. Toppings, I think I've got a few ones, but but I'm stuck on one specific thing. And I thought right. this, yeah, and tare usually is quite complicated, to be honest. Yeah, it's one of it's the not. things. It's not. It's wow. complicated because we don't understand what we're aiming for with the tare, which is that it adds two things. It adds salinity and it adds flavor. And then optionally, but almost always, it adds some form of glutamic acid, umami, if you will. So yes. what are umami building ingredients? Well, kombu is probably the big one, but meat has glutamic acid as well. And then you have synergistic nucleotides. These are ingredients or components that essentially increase sensation of umami on the palate. Classic examples of this are like mushrooms. Do you have any dried mushrooms at your house at all? Mm -hmm. Shiitakes, mm -hmm. morels, porcini. Mm -hmm. The other ones are the dried fish. Niboshi is common, but you can use like anchovies. They won't add any glutamic acid per se, but they will boost our ability to sense Up to MSG. eight times when you have equal parts. Well, I'm going to use anchovies and I'm going to dilute them in some soy sauce. There's lots of umami mm. and soy sauce already, and the soy sauce will go well with a host of different soups that you make. But you'll have to play around with it and see what works. I'm going to keep thinking, man. You've chosen a difficult one. <laughs> if, if, there was, if there was an easy answer to this, trust me, I would let you know. If you pass by Paris and you accidentally start a, a, a ramen <laughs> pop-up store. Alex, you know I was supposed to go to Paris and then this happened. It was like I was planning on doing it. I was like, we're gonna go to Europe, it's gonna be great. I'll, I'll, I'll message Alex two weeks before and we'll just like, I don't know, we'll shoot some stupid video. Yes, for sure, for sure. Man, thank you so much. Have a good one, man. Hopefully that was helpful. Yes, it was. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I love yeah. it. Yeah, and be safe, okay? Yeah, thanks. Bye-bye, man. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. This soy sauce anchovies and canned mushroom these are the boosters this is the main source of glutamic acid put everything in a saucepan reduce it down tare done on the stove it goes so i haven't got any spring onions in my fridge so instead i'm using the very core of a leek i think it can work okay Quite strong, this stuff, huh? Ooh, salty! Wow! I think everything is ready, guys. Just need to boil up the noodles, and I can assemble this. Okay, quick word about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes. They cover many topics like illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and obviously cooking. Skillshare classes include both video lessons, but also a real class project. And that makes it inspiring, yes, but also very practical when it comes to actually learning a new skill. At the moment, I'm following two classes. The first one is called Ink Drawing Techniques, Brush Nib and Pen Style by Yuko Shimizu, who is a Japanese illustrator based in New York City. Her inking work is basically mine I'm also following another class about productivity by Thomas Frank, who is a productivity nerd. At less than $10 a month, Skillshare definitely is affordable, especially considering that for this price, you get unlimited access to all the classes. The first thousand of you guys to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to ramen. This looks absolutely stunning. Mmm, ça c'est carrément mortel. Oh wow. Look at that. And then, wow. It feels like I'm becoming me again. It's sweet. All the elements are balancing out. <laughs> I'm gonna be slurping till the end of this video. Now, as a bowl of ramen, it definitely works both from a pleasure but also a balance point of view. Now, the most unexpected part of this bowl, the broth. I did that as a gimmick at first or just to prove my point. 
But then it turned out to be so sweet and reduced and flavorful. Of course, it needs a bit of taste and adjusting during the cooking process itself. If you listen to what the broth has to tell you, then it definitely works. I'm blown away by this bowl of ramen. Blown away. So I hope this little bowl of noodle brought a smile to your face because it definitely brought one to mine. If you want me to cook something specific, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, take the opportunity to just let me know how you feel, how you're coping with the situation, and let me know what you're cooking these days. Be safe, stay at home, take care, bye-bye, salut.